Hi, third graders. My name is Mrs. Compton. Maybe you might recognize me from working in your second grade class last school year, or maybe even from videos during distance learning last year. So you probably know me and you probably know I love math. So we get to work together during distance learning this school year, and I'm going to help uh, you learn some math stuff. Um, and my dog Chip might appear in some videos too to help you learn some math stuff. And um, I might be working here in this room or you might even see my computer screen sometimes. Um, but I just wanted to take a quick moment to introduce myself because you're gonna be seeing me every week. So again, I'm excited to work with you and I can't wait to hear some of your strategies as we get going in distance learning. All right, up next, your first lesson. Here is our first task today. So my favorite question is, what do you know? And also, what do you notice? So even if you don't know much about this number line yet, what do you notice and what can you figure out? Everybody hit pause for a few moments and see all the things that you can figure. Okay, so let's check this out. I'm going to guess at some of the things that you noticed. I'm going to guess that you noticed this number line starts with a zero and goes all the way to 100. All right, did you get that one? I bet you did. Okay, I'm going to guess that you probably counted these little lines. These are called tick marks. No fancy names here for these guys. So these are tick marks on the number line. And maybe you thought, well, that tick mark doesn't have any value. So I'll start with this one. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. But we landed on 100, so that means each tick mark isn't worth one. So I wonder if you figured out what each tick mark is worth. Did you do that? Let's see if you can figure it out. What do you think each tick mark's worth? Try it out. I've got a good one. I bet some of you probably thought about where the middle point would be and what the value of the middle point would be. So what's right between zero and 100? And if you answered 50, you got it. So let's check this out. Where would 50 go? Point to the middle of the number line. There it is, 50, right there. So from here to here, that's 50. And from here to here, that's another 50, which makes 100. All right, so maybe you figured out by now what the value of each tick is. Let's count them out. All right, here we go. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. All right, now check this out, you guys. I bet some of you could already place numbers on this number line, and you don't even know everything about this number line, or maybe you do. All right, so let me ask you this. Could you figure out where five would go? Point to the screen where you think five would go. All right, if you are pointing right here, you're right. Because if we zoomed in between zero and 10, five would be the halfway point, right? So if we know halfway between each of the tens, we add another five, we can then figure out, well, 10 plus another five would give us 15 and 20 and 25 and 30 and 35. So there's so many things that we could figure out even though we don't have all of the information set right in front of us. Okay, so let's check out this next screen. We're actually gonna try placing some numbers on the number line. All right, so this is the same number line, but here we go. I have this number here. And I'm gonna start over here at the zero. And I want you to look to see where you would put the 95, okay? So I want you to yell, stop, when you think I should stop. All right, so I'm gonna start here. Here we go. I'm gonna slide it, tell me when to stop. Should I stop there? No. How about now? Nope. Did you say stop right there? If you did, you got it, because 95 is right between 90 and 100. Okay, let's try another one. 
Ooh, this one's 36. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start at the zero. Get your eyes where you think the 36 would stop. Okay, and I want you to tell me, stop, when you think I should stop. Okay, here we go. And should I stop there? Some of you are telling me no, I'm sure of it. And if you're telling me no, you're right. It's not quite there yet because that would be like 35 exactly, right between the 30 and the 40. So I have to go just a little more. So probably right there. Okay, let's try out another one. Here we go. 16. Ready? Are you disturbing people in your house when you're yelling stop? Make sure you don't disturb your brothers and sisters. Okay, tell me when to stop. Ready? Oh, we missed it. Better start again. Here we go. Stop. How about that right there? Did that look right? I think we were talking about 15 on the last slide, right? So we were saying 15 would be right there. So that looks about right for 16. All right, let's do one more. Don't wake up anybody in your house by yelling stop. Okay, here we are. 14. Ooh. Here we are. Ready? Right there? Oh, I think that's it, right? Because let's see, if that purple dot is 15, then it's just going to be right to the other side. All right, now we have all these numbers on here, and we can think about which number they're closest to. So if you've ever heard of rounding, it's kind of like thinking about what is it closest to. So let's say I asked you to round to the nearest 10. Well, we counted by 10s, right? We said 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on. Those are all 10s. So if I said round to the nearest 10 for the number 16, would it be closest to 10 or would it be closest to 20? Let's get a highlighter here. All right, so we're going to try to place 16 and we're going to round it to the nearest 10. So is 16 closer to 10 or is it closer to 20? Tell me. Did you say 20? It is because we have that little middle point right there for the 15, right? And the 16 is a little closer to the 20. So we're going to write down that if we rounded six, uh, 16 to the nearest 10, our answer would be 20. All right. Shall we try another? What about, ooh, what about 14? We're going to round that to the nearest 10. So take a look. Where's the 14 on the number line? It's right there. Is it closest to 10 or is it closest to 20? Because those are our two multiples of 10. Those are what we say when we count by 10. All right. So let's see. We know our halfway point is that 15 right here. So our 15 split the uh, the 10 there, or betw right between the 10 and the 20, we have 15. So that means 14 is to the left of that 15. So that means it's actually closer to the 10. So if we round 14 to the nearest 10, we would get 10. Okay, let's check out the next one. Here it comes. 95. Okay. This one's a little different. So I want you to consider where 95 is on the number line. Everybody check that out. It's in the dead center, isn't it? It's right between 90 and 100. So for this one, we're trying to figure out, is 95 closer to 90 or 100? What do you guys think? All right, so this one takes a little thought here because it's in the dead center. It's not really closer to 90 or 100. It's in the middle. So we have to think about this. 
if it falls in the middle, all we do, we just take the bigger number. Okay, so, or the larger number, I should say. So we should take the, what, 90 or the 100? We're going to take the 100. So we're going to say 95 rounds to 100. All right. So last one isn't going to be a surprise here, right? So the last one is, whoop, got a little purple line there. Let me get rid of that. The last one is 36. So we're going to round 36 to the nearest 10. All right. So everybody look at 36 on the number line. Here it is. We're looking at, ooh, I could just move my little highlights. There we go. So the answer will either be 30 or 40. It's going to fall between those two tens. So we have to look and think about which one it's closer to. Now remember, 35 is where it's split off, right between 30 and 40. And 36 is to the right of that middle point there between 30 and 40. So that means it's closer to 40. So 36 rounded to the nearest 10 is 40. We can also do the same thing with rounding to the nearest 100, which is kind of fun because if you look at this number line, you can see I've changed it, right? But you can still notice things about this. So let's check this out. So we have zero, but now we have 100. 100 is not over here this time. We counted by 100s here. So I have 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. So I can still think about uh, numbers and round them to the nearest 100, but now I have to think about what is right between 0 and 100. Do you know what that is? Mm. Well, on the last page, we saw right between 0 and 100, it was... 50, right? So let's check this out. Let's see if we can put a 50 here. Does that make sense? 0, 50, 100, 150. All right, let's see here. We're going to check out what's hidden below. Ooh, we're going to try to place 489. All right, so I want you to tell me the stop when you think I should stop. All right, here we go. Eyes to pick, you need to use your eyes to figure out where you think it would land. Here we are. Tell me when to stop. Gotta get into the 400s, here they come. Did you say right there? Did we say it together at the same time? I hope so. Okay, so it probably goes somewhere in there. All right, so now we're rounding to the nearest hundred. So we have to choose the nearest hundred this time. So is it closest to 400 or 500? Well, you can look and see, basically, we're just looking from here to here. Is it closer to the 400 or the 500? Well, it's closer to 500, right? So if we are rounding to the nearest 100, 489 rounds to 500. Yeah. Okay, so let's check out another one. Hmm. Here it comes. Let's pull out that red one. All right, so 247. So I want you right now with your eyes to figure out where 247 would go. All right. You have your spot. Point to it on the screen. All right, here it comes. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Ooh, it's almost touching 250. So close. Maybe just a little bit that way. Okay, so that's 247. So. We know that this little dot right here is 250. So is it closest to the 200 or the 300? What do you think? Which way would it round to the nearest 100? So we're looking at, is it closer to 200 or 300? And if you said 
it's closer to 200 because that's 250 and that's the middle point between 200 and 300, then you would be right. Okay, let's try one more. Here it is, 150. All right, let's get, wait a minute. That's not fair. You already know where 150 goes. It goes right there. Okay, so it's right in the dead center. We already talked about that. So if we have a, a number that's right in the middle, like this number, 150, which way will it round? Will we round it back to 100 or will we round it forward to 200? All right, on the count of three, tell me your answers. One, two, three, tell me. That's right, you said 200 and you got it. So when you are being asked to round, you might notice 247 rounds to 200, and 150 also rounds to 200. So even though those numbers are almost 100 apart, they share the same number that they're rounded to. Basically, we're just using the number line to help us give us guidance. So when you're thinking about rounding, I want you to imagine a number line in your mind, and I want you to think about where it would fall, and what's the middle point, and how can that help you? All right, your turn to try. Check in with your teacher to see what numbers you should round.